Hi, how you doing? Um, firstly, I want to apologise because I've left my tripod behind, so you're quite low today, so you're going to be spending a little bit of time looking up at me. But that's as proper as, as it should be, it's right and proper. Um, what we're going to look at today very briefly is the first video on time. So it's another one of the principal grounds. We've looked at distance and we've looked at place. Now we're going to look at time. And these three are intrinsically linked. They're interwoven with each other. Now you remember when we looked at place, what we were saying is that if I can carry out my action without having to step, I'm in the place. Whether that's with a sword, a quarterstaff, a dagger, or just with my hand. So for the purposes of the video, we're just going to use the bag as a target and my hand as the weapon. So here we go. I can punch the bag without having to step, therefore I'm in the place. And what that means is that that punch is a true time technique. We split time into true or false. If I'm here and I can't hit the bag and I step in, that's a false time technique. And this differentiation between true and false is absolutely vital, and it's really very simple. Effectively, what Silver tells us is that if I can carry out an action of my hand without having to move my foot, then the action of my hand is fast. And if I have to be able to have to move my foot in order to be able to carry out the action, then my hand is tied to the speed of my foot and therefore slower and therefore false. So that's essentially the difference between true and false. We're going to keep referring back to this. I've got a couple of drills that I've filmed already, but I wanted to get this video out there first because we're going to talk about time and distance and place a lot as I explain what's going on in the drills. So basically, don't worry about the difference between the different true times and the different false times. We'll cover them in a further video, but for now, just bear in mind, can I carry out the action without having to step? Yes, I can. Therefore, if I do step, this is still as fast. Example B, if I'm here and I throw a straight jab without a step, it's fast. Now, if I put a step behind that, it doesn't actually slow the jab down in any way, shape or form because the step wasn't necessary for the jab to meet its target. So this action was not tied to the speed of my foot. We'll come into this in more detail, but for now, bear that in mind. That's the important thing. Can I carry out an action without having to step? If I can, it's true. If I can't, it's false. 